the Lord, we had a healing service. And we prayed for people. We're going to do the same now before I even preach. And, uh, but I want you to know we already have seen the Lord's hand this morning. So there's somebody here this morning, her wrist was in tremendous pain for, the, for a long time. And she was actually having pain this morning. And we prayed for her. She also had back pain and so forth. But she told us that after we prayed that her wrist was healed. She said there was no pain. She was moving it. She was sitting there in the back. Yeah, give the Lord some praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Right away, she was healed. And uh, what a wonderful testimony. Then somebody else was sitting on that chair over there. Um, we also prayed for her. And she had um, pain uh, in several places. But the one that she specifically pointed out was, was her back. And uh, yeah, her back. And uh, we prayed for her. And as she walked back, she turned around and she said, you, you know, I have no pain. She said the whole meeting, she, the praise and worship, she had back pain. But as she walked back, she realized she had no pain. She literally had the pain in the meeting. And then when she walked back, there was no pain. And she, she moved her back for us like this. I, told, I encouraged her to do it. And she had no pain. That was in our little congregation here today. Not some big crusade or something. And thank God for that. But right here this morning, God did that. Amen. Amen. And, um, and we, we prayed for several people. And one brother came to me. He said, you know, he's been talking to different people. You know, in the mornings we have more people than in the evening. He says, and it seems like everybody seems to have been healed or they feel better. Mm. Praise God. Wow. And I got a letter this week. Heidi brought me the prayer requests. She, she goes to the mail. She brings me the prayer requests that people send through the mail. And uh, puts it on my desk and I lay my hands on the, 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 the prayer requests and I pray for them. She said, but this is not a prayer request. This is a praise report. And there was a page all the way in the front, all the way in the back. Somebody that came to our tent crusade in Harrington, Delaware, at the, um, there where the, uh, the, the casino is. We actually put a 3,000-seater tent up there a few years back and had a crusade. They were there, but they, they told me that... When I was at Kerry's camp, remember about a month ago, I was at Kerry's camp. Oh, you guys were there too. Uh, so, so one of those people who came up, remember I told this testimony. And let me just tell the testimony again, because this is all leading towards me wanting to pray for you before I preach. Uh, because this is also part of just encouraging you to receive your healing. Because I'm expecting God to heal us here this more evening. So, so I told the testimony while I was preaching. That um, Pastor Tim Dukes, uh, who uh, is the pastor of the Church of the Central Worship Center, uh, he and I went to India together probably several years ago. It's probably 2010, I guess. I don't know. It's maybe this is a long time ago. And, uh, and he had had issues with, with um, kidney stones. And, and so when we finally got to India and we drove a far away after we took the flight, we arrived in India, in, in the city where we were going to have the crusade. And that morning, he came to my room and, and he said to me, I just want you to know that I, have, I feel kidney stones coming on. I know what it feels like when it's coming on. And now, it's one thing to have it when you get close to BB Hospital. It's another thing when you're out there far away from the closest place. You know, I'm sure there was a clinic in the city, but, but he... Um, so he, he said, you know, I, I just need the Lord to heal me. So we prayed that morning, and I tell you, we felt the anointing of the Spirit, the healing power of God, and God, we, we believed God that God would remove it. And you know, that day, God healed him of kidney stones, not only then, but his entire life till now, but it's 2021 now, so 11 years, and I think it was 2010, but it was maybe longer than that, but he was he was he's healed till this day amen till this day he's healed and um so i i told that story at kerry's camp and then somebody there said well they were they were um diagnosed with a mass on her kidney she was diagnosed with a mass on her kidney and um and she was going to go back to the doctor and all that so she she was at Kerry's camp that night, and we prayed for her. 
And uh, I can't even remember her or anything, but we prayed for several people. And so I got that letter for her that Heidi brought to me in my office, uh, and uh, I read it there. And she said when she went back to the doctor after that prayer, uh, carries camp meeting, that the doctor told her that the mass that was on her kidney is gone. It's totally gone. Hallelujah. Gone. Not smaller or any, just totally gone. Let me tell you, there's a healing Jesus. Amen. There's a healing Jesus. And the other day we had a pastor's meeting. We had this meeting with pastors, there's 35 pastors that are so far on board for this crusade. And a pastor came to me and she told me, I want you to know that the evening that we were at Kerry's camp, there was a lady who they called Granny. Yeah. She's 95 years old. Do you remember her? Uh, we do. We yeah. yeah. And we prayed for her that night. I was fellowshipping with everybody. Mm -hmm. I went to her and, and, uh, and I just said, Dear God, bless you and so forth. And she said, You know what? My knees, I don't have any pain in my knees because she had pain in her knees. So that was that night. So now two weeks later or more, we met with, um, with this uh, at the pastor's meeting. And this pastor comes to me and she says, you know, that lady would testify in their church, in the Methodist church, and told them all that I'm healed. My knees are healed. Praise God. So we see a wonderful new breakthrough in healing. Amen right now. So I'm believing God for healing and miracles. Amen. Yeah. So tonight, I want to pray for you. Yeah. Rita, would you come first? I'm going to the surgeon this week. Come, let, let's, let's hear. You're going to the surgeon this week, yeah. and what do you need healing for? Well, I would like for him not to find anything to take out. Amen. All right. Father God, thank you so much for Rita. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Rita. And God, we pray for healing. And Father, your word says, we will lay our hands upon the sick and they shall recover. And we believe it, Lord. And so tonight, Lord, I'm going to lay my hand on her head. And as soon as I do, I expect the power of the Lord to flow through my hand into her body and heal her. So, are you, is your faith with me, saints of God? Let's stretch out our hands to Rita. In about five seconds, I'm going to put my hand on her head. And we believe in God that God will touch her and heal her. Five, four, three, two, one. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you for that healing power, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. The healing power of God flows into you right now. Mm. Praise God. Touch your, touch your side there where you need the healing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, mm. in the name of Jesus, we receive with her the healing. Mm. In the name of Jesus. And we expect a testimony to hear what the Lord has done. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, uh, who's going to be next? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Any accidents? Let this be the last one he's ever had. No more accidents. In the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we pray for his hand. We pray for healing over his arm. And we pray, Lord, that we'll hear a testimony of what the Lord has done. And I just heard a testimony the other day of uh, Brother Dawkins, uh, Ronnie Dawkins, who's in Afghanistan right now, an American who, who flew in there. And, and Lord, he told the story in Afghanistan that when he prayed for the child's leg that was broken, he, they could hear the, the bones crackle back into place. Wow. And uh, he was healed. Wow. And that miracle actually saved his life when, when the people saw that because he was about to be killed. And God did that miracle. Long story, but, but Lord, today we pray that you'll do the same for this hand, this arm. Um, in five or ten seconds, I'm going to lay my hands on your head, Jimmy, and I'm going to believe God that God will heal you. 
Are you ready, saints of God? Five, four, three, two, one. In the name of Jesus, the power of God goes through you. The power of God goes through you. The power of God goes through you. We declare you healed in the name of Jesus. And that arm, that hand, we're not going to believe that you'll never have feeling back in that hand. No, you will have feeling in that hand. You will feel in that hand. That hand will be totally, completely healed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jimmy. Now, what do you need prayer for? Thank you, Jesus. Um, I have an ongoing shoulder issue. Yes. Um, and I, my, my Sammy, my dog, I have to continue to pick him up because he doesn't walk. And it has really been a problem. Okay. And it just doesn't seem to go away. So I just have this, like, continual, like, the real pain in the shoulder. Yes. Top of Amen. My, it's almost like a, a rotator cuff thing. Okay. But that I do have, but I don't complain, but I, I, it's there. You know? It's there. Yeah. So let's believe the Lord. Yeah. Won't you stretch out your hands to her yeah. tonight? Lord, we bring Julie to you today. And God, we know that you are a healing Jesus. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, today we pray for healing for her. God, your word says we will lay our hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So today I lay my hand upon Julie in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray for healing to flow right through her body. I expect the healing power of God to flow out of my hand into her body and heal her. Jesus, you said I felt power go out of me when she touched the hem of your garment. And tonight... I pray that power, virtue, dunamis power will flow into my sister and heal her tonight. Father, we pray for the total healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Just receive, just receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't that rain beautiful? Isn't that sound of rain. That sound of rain. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's get to the Word. I've got a wonderful Word tonight. Let's get to the Word. Please go to the first book of Chronicles. Chronicles chapter 1. Chronicles chapter 1. We read from verse 1. I want to ask you a question. How many of you believe that the Word of God is exciting Never mind, no matter what part of the scripture you turn to, because it's all inspired. So, First Chronicles chapter 1, page number 556 in my Bible. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I didn't, I didn't even have pages, I just have my, my uh, digital screen here in front of me. It's just easier for me to read these days. But, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 1, Adam, that was Eve's husband, and his son was Sheth, Enos, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, and then you have Enoch, who walked with God, remember, and was not because God took him. Then Methuselah, oldest man that ever lived, Lamech, Noah, the man with the ark, his son Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Verse 5, the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tyros. And then it talks about his sons, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, that was the, you know, Japheth's oldest son was Gomer. And now Gomer's kids were 
Ashkenaz, Rifta, and Tagorma. And then it goes on and on. Okay, so I'm not going to read all of that. I want you to go to chapter 2, because the whole chapter is like that. The whole chapter. All you'll see is names and names and names. Chapter 2, these are the sons of Israel. Well, that's Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. The twelve sons were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And actually, that's eleven, but Joseph, remember, he had two sons, and uh, through him came, came two tribes, which were Ephraim and Manasseh. So that's how you got the twelve tribes. And then it goes on about the sons of Judah. How many of you think this is really exciting so far? Okay, let's go to chapter 3. Chapter 3. These were the sons of David, which were born unto him in Hebron. The firstborn was Amnon of Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess. The second, Daniel of Abigail, the Carmelitess. The third, Absalom, the son of Mekah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gizor. The fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. The fifth, Shift. The uh, Shephatai of Abital, the sixth Ithrim by Egla, his wife. And uh, how many of you say, let's just keep this chapter? All right, let's go to chapter four. If you read the whole chapter, it's all names, names, names. So let's see chapter four. And the sons of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Kamri, Hur, Shobal, and Rhea, the son of Shobo, begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Ahumai, and Lahad, and these are the families of the Zorathites, and these were the families of Etham, Jezreel, and Ishma. And here we go on and on again. And if you go to chapter 5, chapter 6, if you just, I don't know when this stops, it just keeps on going on. Names upon names upon names upon names. But, I want you to go to verse. 7 of this chapter, 1st Corinthians Chronicles, chapter 4. In the middle of all these names, I want you to notice something. Like a shining light. Verse 7. And the sons of Hilo were Zereth and Jezuar and Ethnan. And Koz became Anud, and begat Anud and Zobeba. And the families of Aharlahel, the son of Harum. And now watch. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast. And that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it will not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. In the middle of all these names, like a shining light, two verses shine, and then we go back to verse 11. And Shemur, the brother of Shiva, begat me here which was the father of Eshton, and Eshton begat Bethrapa, and here we go on and on and on again. So isn't it amazing? Can you hear me with the rain? Can you hear me? You need to come closer. Feel free to come closer. Can you hear me, honey? Okay. Can you hear me? Everybody hear me? All right. So isn't it amazing that in the midst of all these names, Suddenly the story of Jabez comes like a shining light. And so tonight I'm preaching about and God and Jabez called upon the God of Israel. I think God has got such a sense of something that he would put these two powerful verses in the midst of all these genealogies. So Jabez' name means sorrow, misfortune, setbacks. That's what his name means in Hebrew. The reason his name means that is his 
mother called him that name. His mother called his name Jabez because she said, I bear him with sorrow. So it could be that when she was physically giving birth to him, she went through much sorrow. Or perhaps she had a normal birth, but her, her husband had died or something had happened. And she had a time of sorrow. Maybe they were very poor. Maybe they didn't have financial. Maybe they were sick. We don't know what the story was, but whatever it was, this mother had so much sorrow and misfortune and pain that she named her son that. She actually spoke his identity over him. And I want you to know that people oftentimes will do that to us. They will speak over us, our destiny, our identity. Especially when you're children, people say things about you. Children believe what you tell them. They receive a compliment. And it makes them feel great. And then they receive a, a you know, a, a, a condemnation. It makes them feel crushed. Sticks and stones may hurt my bones. But words will never hurt me. Or maybe words will hurt you. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, so Jabez, every time they called me, they were like, Jabez! And everybody knew, misfortune, come here. I remember when we, I was in Malawi before you and I went, honey, when I was alone, still before we got married, I preached in the country of Malawi. And I, uh, we had a baptism service. There's one kid got saved, and his name was Mavuto. Mavuto, which means trouble, misfortune, the equivalent of Jabez. And, uh, and the pastor was very wise. He said, do you want to give him a new name? And I gave him a new name. His name was, I don't know what the, the Malawi word was, the Chichewa or the Tambuka, in the north is the Tambuka tribe. And we called him Blessing. Hallelujah. Blessed. Blessing. And we baptized him. We baptized him. Amen. And he went from where people knew him as trouble to where now he's blessing. And so Jabez was always called, Misfortune, come here. Can you do something for me? Uh, pain, will you go and get something for me? Setbacks, will you go and... Do your schoolwork, your homework. But you know, at some point, Jabez no longer allowed that identity to be on him. And I want to challenge you in the name of Jesus. I want to challenge you. Do not let people's words identify you. But let the word of the living God identify you. God's word calls you blessed. Amen. And so the Bible says that Jabez called upon the God of Israel. Jabez was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Jabez decided, misfortune is not for me. Pain and sorrow is not for me. My mother may have called me that, but I'm not going to receive it. You know, uh, when we were teenagers, our, I guess our youth pastor, or youth leader, talked to us about temptation. And he told us that when you are tempted, that is not a sin. It's when you give in to the temptation. That's the sin. He said, you cannot help that the crows fly over your head. But you can certainly help it that he, to avoid making a nest in your hair. Amen. So, so that is how you can't help temptation coming your way, but you can resist him making a nest in your hair. So in the same way, people can say words over you. Let them say what they want, but you don't have to receive it. You don't have to make it your identity. You've got a new identity. You are a child of the living God. You are a daughter of the king you're a son of the king 
I read a book called I'm a King's Kid. I can't remember who wrote that book, but I'm a King's Kid. Hallelujah, I like that. I'm a King's Kid. I'm a, I'm a child of the King. That's my identity. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Javis got so desperate that he called upon the God of Israel. At some point you have to just call to the God of Israel. You have to call to the God of Israel. Somebody said, I have to call on the God of Israel. Amen. He called upon the God of Israel. And you know, my friend, Psalms 18 verse 3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I want you to know, call upon the name of the Lord. And so your destiny and your identity will change. Amen. You know, it's like a two-edged sword. If you realize your identity, it will change your destiny. Amen. Amen. On the other side, if you realize your destiny, it will also change your identity. It's a two-edged sword. It works both ways. And I want to challenge you. Change your identity to being a child of the living God. Think of yourself as victorious. It will change your destiny. Because if you think of yourself as defeated, there's a city called defeat that is your destiny. On the other hand, if you also think of your destiny. You think of your destiny that I'm going to win. I'm going to be victorious. And the more you, right now you are being defeated. Right now you're being set back. Right now you don't have enough money to pay all your bills. Right now you may have sickness in your body. Right now you may have people trampling over you. But you have seen something in the future. How many of you remember Kim Clement, the prophet from South Africa? When he, when he was, he was actually going to do the, he was going to be the piano player for my uncle John, the evangelist, when he was like a young preacher. A little, but then it never worked out and he went his own way. And uh, I remember when I preached in, I believe it was Human's Dorp in South Africa in the Cape area. I, uh, I preached in a small full gospel church of God and there was a picture of the youth board and there's Kim Clement in a black and white picture all in a suit and tie. Can you imagine Kim Clement in a suit and tie? He was a little chubby and he had a little puffy hair. He you know, looked like a nerd. He had these thick glasses. Little did you know that he would eventually wear uh, cowboy boots and, and, uh, and jeans and have long hair and be in shape and prophesy. And he, he, he prophesied. It was amazing how he prophesied. He could call people's names out and all that. And, um, and praise God. But getting back to King Clement, I heard him sing in a, in a worship con concert. They so sang the songs that they, that, they, that they knew. And suddenly the Holy Spirit came on them. And God gave them a new song in that concert. It was kind of a little bit of a rap. And he went like this. He says, I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look. Say it with me. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better. One more time. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. Amen. Now, my friends, let me tell you, I, you have seen your destiny. You've seen your destiny. You've seen that in the future, there's a victorious Julie. There's a victorious Rita. There's a victorious Heidi. There's a victorious Joel. And all the whole lot of other people sitting out, whatever your name is. Amen. And on the YouTube video, whatever your name is, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. Your destiny will change your identity. You'll think of your, and the more you see your future, the more you realize, I'm not what I am right now. I'm changing my way of thinking about myself. And uh, 
Romans 10 verse 13 says, Whosoever calls upon the Lord, name of the Lord shall be saved. So Jabez called upon the name of the Lord. But listen, it says he called upon the God of Israel. Do you think that the writer of Chronicles was just like writing, thinking the God of Israel sounds really nice for me to write that. No, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now who was Israel? It was the nation, but it's also the man. Israel, whose first name was Jacob. Remember, his name was Jacob, which means deceiver, coward. And then God said, I can't use you like that. I'm going to change your name, change your identity. And he changed it from Jacob to Israel. The word El comes from the word Elohim, which means God. Israel means prince and conqueror with God. Jacob had to start thinking of himself as not being a deceiver and a coward, but as a prince, as a conqueror with God on his side. So when the Bible says Jabez called upon the God of Israel, he was talking about that covenant God, the God who made a covenant with Jacob. See, God showed him what his future would be. God told him that through you all the nations of the world would be blessed. It was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the blessing was going through. And so Jabez was thinking, God didn't say I'll make you a curse. God didn't say I'll make you a sorrow. God didn't say I'll make you a misfortune. God says I will make you a blessing. You'll be blessed and I'll make you a blessing. And through you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Which, by the way, was fulfilled in Jesus. Amen. Jesus was the fulfillment of that. Through him, all the nations of the world shall be blessed. So, so my friends, here we have Jabez. And everybody calls him cursed and, and uh, misfortune. But then he remembered, that's not what God's word says. I've read the Torah. I've read the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I've read in Genesis that I'm supposed to be a blessing. And that's when he changed. And he called upon the God of Israel, the God who made the covenant with him. And he was now part of Israel, the nation. And as his forefather, Israel, was, was the man who was a prince and a conqueror with God, so Jacob, so, so Jabez would also be a prince and a conqueror with God. That's why he called upon the God of Israel. And lift your Bibles right now. Say, this is a copy of the covenant. Amen. I call upon the God of the covenant. And while you have your Bible up, they say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I don't want to keep you forever here tonight. And I have quite, a few, quite some mileage to. And Heidi, I know you have to leave at some point. So when you're ready to go, just don't worry. I'll, we'll, we'll let you go. But I'll, I'll try and finish this in 10 or 15 minutes. There's not many costal minutes here. You know, 10 minutes is like an hour. But... Uh, but Jabez called upon the God of Israel. He knew that he was in covenant with God. Read Deuteronomy 20, 28 sometime. See the blessings. Uh, he had no one else to turn to, so he turned to God. He learned not to depend on man, but to depend on God. He, um, he exchanged these limited resources to unlimited resources. Hallelujah. Because in God is unlimited resources. And he called upon the name of uh, uh, the God of Israel, saying. Yes. Somebody say saying. Say there's power in my words. Power of declaring and de there's power in declaring and decreeing God's word. Speak God's word, my friends. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, verse 21. And what did he say? He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Amen. My friends, I want to encourage you. Start thinking in terms of blessing, not curses. Don't think God is against you. God's for you, not against you. God is on your side. I better say, you're on his side. 
And as long as you ride with him, you're on the winning side. But look what he said. He said, oh, that thou would bless me indeed. And I looked this morning this in, the, uh, in a word. And it's uh, in the Hebrew, it says, Barek taberkeni. Barek taberkeni. And the word taberkeni is related to the first word barek. And so that means, do you know what barek taberkeni means? It means bless me, bless me. That's why we say, Thou bless me indeed. You, you know uh, what it means when you say uh, um, something by the square, by square, you know. So, so uh, when, you t when you take a number and you multiply it by itself, that's squared one, I believe. And you multiply it by its itself twice and it's squared two. I, I don't understand math as well, but something like that. Forgive me if I have it all wrong, but it's some. But, but when he said, oh, that you would bless me, bless me, you know what he was saying? Bless me to the greatest level ever. He was taking the limit off. You know when the Bible tells us that, that uh, I will bless you with double? I always thought it's just twice as much. But the Hebrew thought is, it, is not twice. It is unlimited. The word double in Hebrew, does, it could mean double in this, like twice as much. But in God, the Lord blessed Job with twice as much, you know, so or, or double. Uh, yes, he had double, but God's plan was like, okay, you only get a double, but that's the cutoff point. No, when the Bible says double, it means unlimited, unlimited. And so when Jabez said, oh, that you would bless me indeed. He was saying, oh, that you would bless me, bless me squared oh that you would just bless me bless me bless me bless me can you re can you say bless me uh, uh, seven times with me oh that you would bless me 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 that is what Jabez thought Jabez was like God you're an unlimited God and you are a God who is going to since you are unlimited, you are going to bless me in an unlimited way. He decided he was going to take the, the limit off of God. The Bible says that they limited the God of Israel in the book of Psalms. My friends, God doesn't want you to limit him. He wants you to remove the limit off of God and say, challenge me. Believe me. Believe me for the impossible. Believe me for big things because I can do. Listen. Ephesians 3 verse 20. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And the Amplified Bible is, this is the only verse I think I've ever memorized in the Amplified Bible. It says, and God can do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, hopes, and dreams according to the power that works in us. Amen. Now that's amplified. Wow. Amen. Amen. That sounds like, sounds like like King James on steroids. <laughs> Amen. So, so this is what he said. And I want to challenge you, my friends. Let's believe the Lord. That you will bless me big time. That's, that's really what it means, big time. Bless me big time. Bless me big time. And look what he said. He said that thou would enlarge my coast. Or in the New King James, enlarge my territory. So maybe his mom had a little corner in the village. A little hut there, or maybe a, a building, or... Maybe a run-down one. You know, remember she had sorrow. She bore him in sorrow. So they were from a poor family, maybe. They're in the corner of, of, the, of the village, a little small shack, maybe. I, I, we don't know. We just have to think what, what it could have been like. All we know is they had misfortune. If something was going to go wrong. It's going to happen to Jabez's family. They wrote Murphy's Law before Murphy wrote the... Have you ever heard of Murphy's Law? It's, if something's going to go wrong, it's going to happen. But I don't think like that. I think in terms of if, if somebody's going to be blessed, it's going to be me. It's going to be you and you and you and you. Amen. Amen. And so, so he said, Lord, that you will enlarge my territory. 
enlarge my coast. He looked at his little area and said, I can't live here. I need some Lebensraum. I need some room to live. I need some Rehoboth. The word Rehoboth means abundant room. Amen. Place of abundance, yes. It doesn't mean like room for all. You know, we're all tolerant out here. That, that's not what Rehoboth means. It means room for all this. This blessing, big blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And so, so he said, Lord, I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to settle for just these, you know. I've been in villages in India before. You see these small little areas. That's their land. You know, I'm not going to settle for this 20 feet by 20 feet. I'm going to believe you that you'll enlarge my coast. Yeah. That you'll do something big for me. Yeah. It was not just his property, but it was his life. Yeah. Right. You're going to bless my life. And, and I want you to notice this scripture. Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3. Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3. When we had our big tent, I had a crusade in Ashboro, North Carolina. I preached on this scripture, but I'm going to read to you now. We had a big tent, could probably see 3,000 people. The chairs you're sitting on right now was part of the three of the 1,000 chairs we had. Now we have like 60 left. The rest we we blessed to a, to, to the, we, the we gave the we gave the tent to somebody in Atlanta with all the chairs except for 200 chairs with which a church bought in uh, in Delmar, Maryland. And uh, but anyhow. Listen to this, Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not. It means like, don't panic like this. Go for it. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords. Strengthen thy stakes. Now watch this. Thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities inhabited. Yeah. Woo, isn't that powerful? Yeah. Let me just read it again. Wow. Enlarge the place of your tent. I mean, that speaks for itself. Make it bigger. Mm-hmm. Stretch for the curtains of your habitation. Wow. And then it says, spare not. He's like, like, don't just make it 10 feet. Make it a mile. (laughs) Make it bigger than that. Spare not. My friends, I want to challenge you. Believe God for big things. God can do bigger than you can ever imagine. Bigger than you could ever imagine. So spare not. Don't limit your mind and your prayers. Spare not. Strengthen, lengthen thy cords. The, the, The cords that hold the tent together. Make them longer. Because as the tent is going to be bigger, strengthen thy stakes. You know, uh, I want to encourage you. If your vision has taken a long time to come to pass, the reason is because of the foundations. Strengthen your stakes. You cannot build something big with shallow foundations. I remember a friend of mine has got a church in uh, the Salisbury, Delmar area. He, to, he, he says when they were building that overpass there in Salisbury, for the longest time, they were drilling holes and pouring concrete into those holes and metal mess in those concrete before you could even see a big bridge. Yeah. All you could see is holes. Amen? Mm-hmm. Holes. Because a strong building needs a strong foundation. And sometimes your vision takes a long time to come to pass. But I want to encourage you. It shows that the foundations are being laid. Oh, isn't that powerful? Your foundations are being laid. God is laying the foundations. He's going to do a big work. And the deeper the foundations, the greater the building that's going to be on it. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. And then it says, for thou shalt break forth. Somebody say, break forth. Break forth. Amen. Break forth. People have put limitations around you. 
break forth out of those limitations. And he says, break forth on the right hand and on the left. I mean, God is a big God. So tonight, I'm, I'm basically going to close with that. Let me just go to, to the scripture again and, uh, and end it with that part where in, in the end of that uh, First Chronicles 4, verse 10, the last part. It says, and God granted him that which he requested. I don't know about you, but that's beautiful to me. God granted him what he requested. God looked at him and said to the angels, you know what, boys? I don't know who that man is. Of course he knew. But go send him resources. Open the storehouses from heaven. Go send him resources. I like people like that, says God. Here's somebody whose destiny was wrapped out in misery. This is a very name Jabez means misfortune and misery and pain. But he broke out of that mold. And he said, oh God, that you bless me big time. Bless me, bless me. That you bless me indeed. And enlarge my purity. Angels, listen to that man. He had every reason to fail. But he decided that's not my destiny. So I want you all to go open the windows of heaven, send him all that he needs. And I don't know what the rest of the story is. Maybe the rich people of this world in some areas are descendants from him from way back. You know, who knows? We didn't, just don't even know. But, 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 he, but the Bible says God granted him what he requested. God granted him what he requested. Amen. Have you ever asked for something and wasn't granted at a certain time it was granted? Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, God grants you what you requested. But the thing is, God didn't grant him what he did not request. Amen. God only granted what he requested. If he requested, Lord, I'm not asking for much. Just give me something that's a little better than this. Maybe you could say, Lord, you know, this shack of ours, I could live in it, you know. But can we just get a new roof? Amen. And maybe just some paint to paint it. That'll, that'll be nice. So we can just be a little better in this village. God would have granted him what he requested. But aren't you glad he didn't say that? Amen. He requested something bigger, something more glorious. Yeah. And God granted him what he requested. So, you know what the Bible says? He was more honorable than his brethren. They were honorable. Of course, he's a man of his word, whatever. But the word honorable also means that God gave him greater honor. God gave him greater honor than his brethren. Greater honor. And tonight, I'm believing that for, for me and for you. I'm also in on this. Come on, somebody. I just preach you happy, but I preach myself happy. Amen. That's amazing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for your wonderful word. Thank you for the prayer of Jabez. He called upon the God of Israel. And Father, tonight we call upon the God of Israel. We call upon the God of the covenant. And Father, we believe in the name of Jesus that you will bless me indeed. That you enlarge my territory, enlarge my coast. My friends, I want you to pray Jabez's prayer after me tonight. Will you just say, O God of Israel, O God of covenant, O God who promised to bless me. Oh, would you bless me indeed. Will you bless me, bless me. Will you bless me big time. While you're at it, Lord, will you enlarge my coast? Will you enlarge my territory, please? Let your hand be with me. Keep me from evil. Keep me from misfortune. That life will not be grievous to me. Father God, you grant me what I request. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just take a moment to let that sink in tonight. Oh, Lord, we receive it right now. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You know, the wonderful thing about speaking in tongues is you're speaking in an unlimited way. Sometimes when you pray in English, you can limit yourself. But the Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, speaketh mysteries in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inspiring your spirit to pray mysteries, means things that your natural mind cannot even fathom. So right now, Lord, we just pray in those tongues. And Lord, we pray big things, bigger than we could ever imagine. Oh, Laibe zumbo kutai, li feno moku, ervo samaki, le feno, halveriki kuna, lo shimakui, panna niko, sandoku. I'm getting kind of the weirdest interpretation right now. I feel that God saying, that was a good sermon. That was good what you spoke tonight. That is good what you heard tonight. I like to hear that kind of preaching. This is God saying this. I like to hear that kind of preaching. I like to hear somebody making a demand on God. Somebody who makes God bigger than he is in your current mind and perception of who God is. For the Lord would say... No matter how big you think God is, He's bigger than that. God is bigger than that. God is bigger than your biggest imaginative perception of the Lord. I'm bigger than that. I'm bigger than that. And tonight, my word is coming to your hearts. My word is coming to your souls and your spirit. But word is coming to your whole being. It is like a seed that was sown into your soul. And it's going to grow and bear much fruit. And behold, you will look back. A few days from now. And you'll suddenly realize, wow. My perception of God has increased. God is bigger. You're, you're immediately going into a higher level in your faith and in your perception of God. Like immediately, instantly, you're already there. And it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Dare to believe me. Dare to make me big. Because trust me, you can never make me bigger than I really am. You can never go all out and make God bigger than He really is. Father, thank you for that word. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus.